Well, it's still not too late for Salford to mount a serious challenge for the top four. They were third not long ago, and when they beat Wigan on Easter Monday, things were looking good for the Red Devils. But four Super League defeats followed, and Lee got the better of them in the Challenge Cup. Now next to bottom, but just two wins off the top four and with a game in hand. Can the likes of Theo Farge spark a move up the table? Warrington have won just one of their last four in Super League, but what a victory it was at Leeds. Darrell Clark came off the bench to help that night and he's missed the last two, but his return here could be the key to victory. Yes, Darrell Clark is back after missing the last two. We'll confirm that in a moment, but can Salford end their five-match losing slump and deny Warrington a seventh straight win against them? Well, these are the men they hope will achieve that. The good news for the Red Devils is that Junior Sow is fit again. The Kiwi International has missed all of the games since being injured in that cup defeat at Lee at the start of the month. And there's a debut for teenager Ch Patterson comes back after serving all of his three-match suspension. And on the bench, well, look out for Warrington legend Adrian Morley. He lost two grand finals with the Wolves, but won three Challenge Cups in a six-year spell with them. And now let's take a look at the team he left behind, and Stefan Ratford's back after having been rested for last week's cup tie against Dewsbury. Joel Monaghan doesn't make it, though. Kevin Penny swaps last week's fullback role for a customary place on the wing. Up front, here's the confirmation. Darrell Clark is back. He's missed the last two with a couple of niggling injuries. They had to tie him down, apparently, to prevent him from playing in those. On the bench, Brad Dwyer might have been on the way to Blackpool with the London Broncos this weekend. But following what apparently was an acrimonious move out of the club to Lee for Mick Iam, Dwyer has been recalled and the Wolves had to pay compensation to the Broncos to get him back. Well, here are the Salford Red Devils aiming to end that five-match losing run and deny Warrington their seventh straight win against them. The last win against Warrington for Salford in Super League, 48-24, way back in 2012 but the Wolves still very much in the hunt for a top four finish but such is the topsy-turvy nature of Super League this year they are by no means certain and Rangi Chase and Michael Dobson I just wonder how different Salford season might have been at this point had those two been in operation and in tandem all the way through this is the last of Rangi Chase's seven match suspension well, they've turned out in more numbers than they did when we were last here. And Warrington supporters, as we said in the build-up, they've taken full advantage of Marwan Kukash's generosity in dropping the admission prices. He just wants the people of Salford to come, have a taste and see what they're missing and perhaps come back again in the future. And, uh, well, Steve-O and I bumped into him in the lift on the way up and he said, between seven and 8,000, and he'd have a smile on his face. Now, we've got here from the 2nd Battalion, the Parachute Regiment, Private Chris Wright, and from 4-5 Commando, the Royal Marines, Lance Corporal Dave Coleman, and they are delivering the match balls onto the pitch in front of the two teams here tonight. Steve-O, it's a different atmosphere completely than a fortnight ago when we were last here. Yeah, and all the great players, they like to get that feeling. And it's the one thing that, uh, and as you mentioned, Marwan Kukac was hoping to seven or eight thousand. I think he's uh, going to get his wish because it really will lift both sides. We said before the build-up that Daryl Clark, of course, and uh, Mickey Hyam on his way to Lee. Will it affect? No, I think it'll be a golden opportunity for Daryl Clark. Remember the man of steel. And for all his escapades at uh, Castleford, he did nothing and he loved nothing better than to go out there for the full 80 minutes and uh, it wouldn't surprise me if he goes right the way through and if they get this game wrapped up early then perhaps they can bring the youngster Brad Dwyer who as you say Eddie returned from the London Broncos it's going to be an interesting game a lot of pressure as we mentioned on Theo Farge and also on the referee Ben Thaler let's hope he gives them plenty of room either side because there are plenty of stars out there we should have a good contest. Let's hope so, and there's lots of history between these uh, two clubs. If you look on the sidelines, 
Uh, Stefan Ratchford, of course, there, taking a swing out of the water bottle. He is a former Salford player, Richie Myler as well. Yestin Harris, the Salford coach, began his playing career at Warrington all those years ago before leaving for the Leeds Rhinos. And, of course, waiting his opportunity off the bench for Salford, the one and only big Adrian Morley, who is, after six years at the Halliwell Jones Stadium, a Warrington legend. So, we're just about ready to go. Ben Thayer checked all round, all set. Stefan Ratchford about to get this game underway. And hopes high here at the AJ Bell Stadium for the Salford Red Devils. Let's see how they go. Well, they really need to get off to a pretty good start, but uh, as you can see, this Warrington outfit, three into the first tackle. The one good thing about the the Salford side is that they have the ability to, to score tries. He's very creative, is Theo Farge. And if the forwards can put that platform, especially the runs from Harris and Hansen like that, but they need points early, they need to get the grip into this game. They've had a fortnight's rest, which should help. That was a great drive forward there from Jason Walton. He put um, Daryl Clark on his backside. And you might notice the uh, young man who is uh, in at dummy half. There he is. He's only 19 years of age. His name is Josh Wood on debut. He's come through the system here. And Theo Farge hoists the high kick, first one of the match. Well, I don't know whether other people get thrown in the deep end at work, but Josh Wood, the player you've just spoken about there, wearing number 36 with the involved in that tackle. Eddie, you said that last week he played against Leeds in the under-19s competition. It was his first game for almost a year after having shoulder surgery. What an you know, amazing week he's had. His first game back after not playing, and then here now playing against the Warrington Wolves live on Sky. Good luck to him. And good luck to Justin Harris for making that bold decision to play him. There's Daryl Clark, didn't make too much ground forward. Got the Wolves, though, to halfway on tackle number three. Well, you referred to Houston Harris, said uh, Eddie, in regards to the fact, you know, he, he, he realises that he got the opportunity as a youngster to show his wares, and let's hope that uh, Josh Wood can do exactly the same. But it's not going to be easy, especially with this Warrington outfit uh, in splendid form. That's a little bit too long. That should be taken by Evelds. It was by uh, Declan Patton. It was a bit uh, high, it was a bit long, a bit too long. And Steve, I've been talking to Yesin Harris in the week, and he was referencing Theo Farge. Now, Theo Farge, given the responsibility tonight, you'll see Josh Wood in there at nine. It's Ben Jones Bishop on that occasion, but Josh Wood looking after the hooking role. Well, Haraki, he's going to act as the six to this man's seven. He said to me, if he was given the responsibility that Theo Farge is given in this game at the same age, he's not sure how he would do so. I think sometimes we need to cut Theo Farge a little bit of slack. We'll see how he does and how the game unfolds for him. Well, that was a mistake from uh, Scott Taylor. He's claiming the ball went backwards. It did through his grip, but I think it came forward first. Yeah, uh, just, was. Yeah, just a, li a little... Uh, it bounced backwards very, very quickly. Yeah, you've got to classify that as... Uh, just went less on. backwards. I think it just went less backwards. I think the referees took the view that he's, he's actually uh, ran past the ball as he was going to catch it. But it was, it was a close call. Well, not what they needed. And this will be the first time that uh, they've been put under pressure by this Warrington outfit. Interesting to see whether uh, we'll see a lot of running from not only uh, Daryl Clark, but also Stefan Ratchford. The one thing that Tony Smith likes is to get Ratchford in. That's good work from Clark. But he likes Stefan Ratchford sometimes to jump into that dummy half position. Very quick off the mark. Ben Curry at dummy half this time. He finds Declan Patton. He lays it off to big Ashton Sims. And uh, it's going to be a battle royal between uh, Ashton Sims and Chris Hill and the forwards for Salford. This is Richie Myler, another former Salford player, to Ratchford, quick hands, and then put to ground by Kevin Penny. Well, a golden opportunity, but you just get the feeling that Penny really should have been about a metre behind. It's often very difficult for a centre to assess whether his wing is going to be coming late or whether he goes early, I'm afraid. Kevin Penny went very early indeed. And Chris Bridge is a very skillful player, can play anywhere in the back line. I like to see him in the halves, but on that occasion, he's trying to catch the ball, pass it into a space where he believes his winger will be. But you're right, Steve Oye, he was a little bit too flat, Kevin Penny. The leaders of the first Utility Super League underway against Hulkingston Rovers, you might have noticed. They lead to the Rhinos by six points to nil. And there's Josh Wood again at dummy half. He's getting his hand on the ball very 
early and plenty of times in the opening five minutes, which will do his confidence a bit of good. Not put a bad pass away as yet. Adam Wong here, but what a greeting ah, for him. Great defence. That's tremendous stuff. And, you know, when you push back a, a big forward like that, four or five metres, really shows you the aggression that this Warrington outfit can show. They're really up for this in defence, that is for sure. That's Scott Taylor, and of course, uh, Scott Taylor, a four year deal announced for the beginning of 2016 with the Black and Whites of Hull FC next year. He came here uh, from uh, Hulkingston Rovers via Wigan. He came to Salford on a season long loan, and now he's going back. I suppose he'd call it home to the city of Kingston on Hull to play for Hull FC. Gene Ormsby, meanwhile, for Warrington. That was a poor kick. Easton Harris, the Salford coach, would have been very disappointed with that. As you can see virtually on the first tackle, the Warrington outfit have got over the halfway line. With Ashton Sims. And Clark is waiting at dummy half. He shuttles it left and finds Curry. Curry then to Atkins, and he wasn't going anywhere because they were all around him. It was good work by Theo Farge. And Hill now. Back it comes to Declan Patton. And he's forced back by vigorous Salford defence this time. They reach the last tackle. Expect the kick here from Myler then. And there it is. It's high and Kevin Penny's after it. Well claimed. Very well claimed by Nyla Bowles. Yeah, it looks confident doesn't he, under the high kick, that is for sure. They're hardly missing Kevin Locke, are they, with him there? It's been a good start for Salford, hasn't it? The control has been good. You said they had a week off last week. It looks as though they haven't lost the concentration. They began the game strong and they'll have to be because the Wolves are a top side in Super League. It's important they minimise their errors and try as much as possible to get out of their own half, which is hard at the moment with the way that Warrington are defending in tackles and defending the kicks as well. Harrison Hansen, the Salford skipper, gets a short ball away to Corey Patterson. And he is grounded by the tackle from Chris Bridge. Wood again at dummy half. Back it comes to Wella Haraki, then to Farge. Hill went for the charge down. Farge got the kick away. We'll a lot turn better. Ratchford around. Yeah, a lot better. It, once it gets terra firma, you, you know that you've got an opportunity. You know, those uh, vital seconds as the ball is uh, bouncing around on the turf. Ormsby will play it to Rashford. He will give it to Kevin Penny, who's drifted in off the right wing to get involved in the action in centre field. And Rashford gives it to Curry. Curry then goes wide and finds Atkins, just about. Jeez, that was a pretty high lunge there by Kevin Penny, and I think I think he's made his mark. I think it might be. I think it was uh, was it Atkins that got it? Yes, it was. It's Curry. Atkins, come in. Here's Patton, Patton then to Myler, switch of direction to Ben Harrison. Oh, and Harrison is hurt there, picked up a knock in that tackle. Myler again, this time a dribble through. And uh, Evolves, will he let this go? No, he won't, he'll run it back from his own dead ball line as far as Chris Hill well, I got the Ben Curry. Sorry, Eddie, I, I got the impression there that uh, Myler went for the kick, trying to, trying to hit the padding in around the post, He's pretty close to it as well. Steve O has been given no time, that's three kicks and all three occasions Richie Myler has gone to kick the ball. Salford on red alert, two or three men really putting pressure on him and then if there's a question mark with Warrington and specifically Richie Myler, it's those decisions when he's got no time to think when, uh, when he comes to kick the ball. Well, we're giving a lot of praise to uh, this young fella, 36, Josh Wood, but he's getting the ball away and that's a great charge down. Oh, and it's well claimed back though by Theo Farge, who immediately surrenders Losing the possession it. again. Well, a bit of basketball there, that's for sure. The point I'm making about this young fella, uh, Josh Wood, Eddie, is that he's got to run a little bit more from dummy half as well. I know he'll be pretty nervous, but he's got to make sure that the Warrington, this is the charge down there, good work there by Harrison. But he's got to make sure that this, uh, this Warrington outfit realise that he, he can run from dummy half and make them a little bit wary. This is Westwood for Warrington, uh, 19 metres away from the line. Hiraki and Patterson dealing with the threat. Myler gets it in field to Harrison, seems to have shaken off the knock from that last tackle. Three tackles remaining this set of six, they're eight metres away with Daryl Clark. Clark then to Myler, and Myler attacking the line, gives it to Patton. Patton then to Curry, it looked as though it had drifted forward. And that wall went backwards, so Declan Patton, well, he almost gave himself away there, did Declan Patton. 
Well, I think he was hoping that the official were going to wave for a, another set of six. He thought that there was a, a Salford hand on it, pushed away by Thaler. This is a, a big threat, though, on the Salford line, but Myler nowhere to go. Good tackling coming in there. Grubber to the ground. Oh, it's over the top. What on earth is the prop forward doing there? That's amazing, isn't it? They've looked so much in control for almost 10 minutes, Warrington. And then on the last play, I know Myler was one of the kicking options. He played the ball, so he couldn't be passed as it. But uh, Tony Smith would be disappointed because they've worked hard for 10 minutes to contain Salford down at this end of the field, have them got really under pressure. And it's almost relieved it with an inaccurate kick. It doesn't apply the pressure that it saw. Junior Sow, whose injury in the cup tie against uh, Lee was crucial, his and that of Michael Dobson. This is Harrison Hansen now, the Salford skipper, gets to the fifth tackle, so here comes the last. And Wood, he's feeling the pinch a bit now. Wood, oh, charged down again by Ben Curry. They do this so often, Warrington, and so often they come up with the reward, and Ben Curry gets the reward. He gets the first try of the match. They're always hunting the ball when it's going to be kicked from hand, Warrington. They take the gamble, and this time the gamble came up. And the travelling Warrington support delighted with the fact that Curry is over for the first try of the match. The Irish International is eighth try of the season. Well, you take the risk when you leave it down to one man that does the kicking all the time, and that's Theo Farge. And he really should have learnt early. That's the second time that he got caught not getting the ball away. There's only one way you can overcome that, and that's stand a lot deeper. Taking nothing away from the charge down and carry. But the message has got to get out from Justin Harris that if he's going to get the ball away, Theo Farge has got to give himself room. Can't afford that. Well, he's into double figures now. Is uh, Ben Curry got a couple in the cup run, and that's ten for the season, eight in Super League. Very interesting as well, listening to the coach, his comments from the England side. Steve McNamara last night, when asked by Bill Arthur before the game, which players had caught his eye in the first half of the Super League this year? Ben Curry was one of them. I was fascinated when we came here to see how he performs over the course of the 80 minutes. He's an athletic young player, very skillful. We've seen him create tries with short kicks, not afraid to pass the ball, and as well has the work rate right here to put his opponents under pressure and profit as a result. Well, Phil, the other players were Stevie Ward, John Bateman, so what a wonderful position to be in. Three back rowers, all devastating on the day, and it looks like the international game has, uh, has got a sound footing with those three players. So Stefan Ratchford, former Salford star, about to try and convert that Ben Curry try. I mentioned the link-ups between the two sides. You might have noticed in the uh, yellow trainer's jersey out there as well, Carl Fitzpatrick. He's on the Warrington coaching staff now with Tony Smith, and he is uh, acting as the message carrier and uh, keeping things going on the field. He's just gone to Stefan Ratchford. There he is, the former Salford uh, fullback himself. Big pal of yours, Barry. Well, I just bumped into one of the former teammates, Michael well, Wainwright, who's played for both teams with great distinction. But th this is the hallmark of, of Warrington. They get up quick. And just as I mentioned, no time and no think time for Richie Milo when he comes to kick the ball. They've done exactly the same with Theo Farge, and they've been rewarded with six points on that occasion. Oh, that's a great kick off from Corey Patterson. And there's one of my pet hates. Uh, it really, honestly. At the front row on that back line, and Chris Hill is in a, a tremendous player. He's expecting, and whenever you're expecting or assuming, one of your teammates is going to catch it for you in all kinds of trouble. Deck Patton, obviously a young player with a little bit or less of an experienced thought process, gives Chris Hill probably no communication. Well, maybe it was a mistake by Warrington, but we could credit the uh, the kickoff from Patterson. He yep. found he found the open space. It's the same old story, Eddie. You do not allow a rugby league ball to bounce. Simple. Hull Kingston Rovers lead at the home of the Rhinos. They were 6 0 up. Hull Kingston Rovers now leading by eight points to six. What a season this is in terms of results and the way things are shaping up. That's a great ball from the Rocky. He forced the goal line drop out with a wonderful restart from the Warrington try up the other end and from the goal line drop out. That was a lovely ball from Haraki and he found Patterson. And once he got the ball in his arms, Patterson from 15, 20 metres out, he wasn't going to be stopped over the line.
and they're back in this. Tremendous kickoff, but this should have been taken. You can see there that the, uh, the prop forward, Chris Hill, should have gone for it, taken it on the ball, but you're right. A rocky pass. Oh, tremendous. Just sucked in the man. Had the pace, rather surprisingly. I thought maybe Stephen Ratchford could have got to him a little bit earlier, but that pass from a rocky. And this fella knew he had it. He knew he had the speed. He surprised the fullback, that's for sure. Well, it was the deception from Liam Hood, who's come on for the younger Josh Wood. And it just some subtle touches just gives Wella Haraki half a second, and he releases the big fella. Corey Patterson gets Salford back into the game. Within two minutes of Warrington scoring up the other end, and Corey Patterson, he's kicking the goals as well tonight. He kicked two, as you see, in the cup tie against Lee uh, last month. Can he kick this? It wouldn't be a bad kick if he makes it, and I'll tell you something, he has. Well, welcome back, Corey Patterson. It's only his eighth appearance of the year, a three-match ban behind him for his high shot on Greg McNally of Lee in that cup tie, and Yestin Harris's men have bounced back with a vengeance. That should bring a smile to the face of the good doctor. Well, that try made it clear that over the last two weeks they've been working on improving their attack. You know, lots of teams attack in that manner, passing the ball behind an option runner to another player. But the timing with which Salford did that was far better than we've seen perhaps all season. In fact, they failed to score a point the last time we came here. If they attack with that sort of timing and accuracy and execute the players running as quick as they are, then they're going to get across the line a few times tonight. Quarter of an hour of this match gone. Salford six, Warrington six. Warrington yeah. may be stung by that uh, that concession of the try to Corey Patterson. And it just shows you that you know you're in the element, you come up with the error, and that certainly was one by Chris Hill. As you mentioned, Eddie, no communication from the kickoff. Just lack of queuing and that well that looked pretty high, didn't it, from uh, Harrison. And there are you the, there are your runs from Dummy R from Liam Hood. The reason the, the young player, um, Josh Wood, started, I think, I believe, was when the game opens up after 12 or 15 minutes to get Liam Hood on, who has got a good turn of pace, a good spark play to bring on for Yesin Harris and the Salford Red Devils. Everybody ahead of the kick for Salford. Offside, Everybody says Ben right Thaler, so penalty, right Warrington. Offside. And again, it's just uh, lack of concentration. Everybody in you the can see them. There's five or six to select from, and I think it's Hansen that goes right across as soon as he gets within the 10 metre, it had to be the penalty. Well, a bit of a seesawing game at the moment, but... It's a seesawing season, Steve-O. Yeah, look at, look the, at that first utility Super League table. Yeah, I'm not, I've been, but I've been impressed the way that Salford did not crumble when Kerry got that charge down to score that try. You, you just got a feeling that this season, especially with the amount of injuries that Salford have had, is that, you know, the heads go down early in the game. But not on this occasion, they fall back well. Myler trying to prize an opening, but uh, Taylor and company seeing to it that he wasn't getting any further. This is Patton now. Patton then gets it away to Ratchford. Ratchford finds uh, Ryan Atkins, and the red jerseys are all around him. He goes to ground, just stays inside the whitewash on that far side. Gene Ormsby at dummy half, Patton again. Here now comes Daryl Clark. Oh, and they've uh, given Clark a little bit of latitude here, a little bit of room, but it's a, a flat run. In the end, he finds Bridge. Bridge on a flat run, too. It's suddenly opened up for Bridge. Got great strength and a good pass over the top to Patton. They have a man out wide. They must score if they get it to him. Oh! Now then, did he drop it or did he get it before it hit the ground? They're going to give the try. They're going to give the try on the field. He certainly lost it, but the big question, Stuart Cummings, is... With the try being given on the field, did he ground it simultaneously with the ball hitting the deck? I think they're also concerned about the touchline as well. Certainly from the first look, he looked like he was uh, a long way up in the air. Does he get the ball down first? Well, he's grounded it OK. Yeah, that's OK. Nothing's over the line. The corner flag doesn't count. So this will be a try. Phil Bentham, Ian Smith, the video referees tonight. What do they say? Try for Warrington in the far corner. And Gene Ormsby, but well, he's grabbing his chance with both hands. He's been on the wing now for seven, and he's bagged seven tries in the run. Well, it's fully deserved, but uh, the Salford defence, look, they, 
Stand in the line. It looks man on man, but no one is going to put him down. Clark gets the ball back in the inside. And again, it's a case of what we're going to do. And that was wonderful stuff, wasn't it? Great off road by Chris Bridge. And then they knew they had the numbers. Straight out wide, Ormsby. It's a great finish as well. Superb stuff. Well, I think Chris Bridge plays a massive part in this. I talked about him in the middle. I think he's such a threat with the ball. Holds it in two hands. Players and defending players don't know whether he's going to pass, he's going to run. This time he finds an offload over the top of four players are around him. There's some space somewhere. And Gene Ormsby does a fantastic job of finishing in the corner. Yes, and he was fed by that man, Ben Curry, again. Touches it down, tries in the last four Super League matches for Gene Ormsby now. And this is a difficult kick from Ratchford to maintain the 100% record tonight. Tight to the touch lines, just pulled it the wrong side of the post. Well, for me, the first half of that try was awful attack. You know, they ran across the side of the field. Luckily, they managed to resurrect it by Chris Bridge doing something. And then Ben Curry throwing a brilliant pass to set up the try at the very end. But up until this point, Salford's attack had looked maybe, you know, I mean, I'm not sure where they were trying to achieve here. They've scored in the end, they've kept it alive, and they made me sound stupid here by saying that. But up until that point, they just passed the ball, and Dale Clark was running to the sideline, not the try line. Corey Patterson restarts again. This time there is a clutch of players underneath the kickoff. Declan Patton, it was, gives it to the latest try scorer, Gene Ormsby, and he will be hounded down by three. Interesting, Tony Smith obviously has got the message out and say, listen, from the kickoff, make sure we have numbers in that in goal area. Wasn't as good kick. Well, at least they diffused it. Whoa, be what a game. Sims. That'll be the knock on. That is tremendous stuff. Well, Harrison Hansen getting the pats on the back. He's brave, Ashton Sims. He doesn't care who he runs at. And Corey Patterson was part and parcel of that as well. There's a shoulder from Corey Patterson. Harrison Hansen, one of the toughest defenders in the Super League. You watch Ashton Sims' head roll back. Is there a question mark, Stuart? Well, I don't know about um, whether there's contact with the with the head, but there's certainly a shoulder charge in there that dislodged the ball. So, really, that should have been picked up as a penalty uh, to Warrington. Yeah, I'm with you because uh, he never never moved the arms. He never got them up. He never made any attempt to be involved in the tackle. They've missed that, the officials. Not that Salford will be uh, worrying about it. No, they won't. They're on the uh, on the attack here with uh, Adam Wall. Now, will we be seeing the exciting fullback Evels coming through? He's gone back on that right hand side. Corey Powell. Oh, there's a problem here for Richie Myler. Oh, he's, he's really out. They've got the quickly, they've got the attention to him very, very quickly. That's, that's, good, that's good play by the official. Ben Thaler, he knows that there's a problem. It was an elbow from Corey Patterson, I think accidentally. Obviously, big man on little man. The little man is trying to put his shoulder into the ribs of Corey Patterson, who's six foot in a million. You watch the impact here. Corey Patterson, to be fair, he's trying to get the ball over the top of the player to offload to Junior South. I think that's a accidental. I don't think there's any intent here from Patterson. I think he's, you know, see it often in training, players trying to get it over the top of the tackle shield and offload the ball. And I think that's really what he's trying to do. Well, well, he was was the, any intent, intent He's uh, completely Not out, flat out, as soon as he hit the ground, and uh, special attention, as we always do in our game. You can feel very, very proud of uh, the ability to, uh, well, make sure that the injury is done. They don't move them in the wrong position, Phil. You know all about that. A bit of class there. Yeah. from Corey Patterson. A bit of class there, as we've said a few times. It's accidental. Richie Myler trying to clamp man and ball, as they say, just cops one in the chin, and, and you're quite right, Steve. Oh, we need to give this the right time. I don't think long gone are the days where spectators and, uh, and players get frustrated with how long players take to get up. That, that's a nasty one in anybody's book. Well, from what we've seen this year with the concussion injuries and the bangs to the head, you wouldn't expect to see Richie Myler back tonight. I agree, Eddie, and, you know, on the evidence of watching that, they will get a, maybe a chance to see the replays of that, the Warrington staff and coaching and medical people really will uh, will watch that again just to see how he coped, but I don't think we'll see him again. Can we see Salford create another try? Baraki gets the ball away, and this is Nile Evels. Oh, he's a little bit too fancy for Greg Johnson there. Well, he was hoping that uh, 
the winger was hoping to come back on the inside and again out of the blocks far too easy they've got to concentrate you know they've, they've, they've lost possession you know in defense Mike in defense the referee hadn't got back to set the 10 meters when the ball was played I've got a sim bit of sympathy for them there, Stuart. Well, a bit of sympathy, but also the players should know that they've got to get back 10 metres, and they were probably only about seven at that time. Yeah, as soon as they lost possession, you can see the heads go down. It's all a matter of vital seconds. But if you lose that concentration, you can pay the price. Warrington already paid the price for not taking the ball on the fold from the kickoff. Well, they've got a penalty here because this has been deemed to have been stolen in the tackle there were three man hunting uh, Chris Hill and the football the ball came out and the referee says that is a stolen ball that's that looks like that. a loose carry that's an offload it is wait, wait, wait. well wait. we had controversy last night and uh, it looks like we're gonna have the same this is Chris Hill Move here, look he's trying to offload that it hits Harrison Hansen's leg and that should be play on well they're going to maybe pay a costly price, Salford, unless they muscle up in defence. Saints leading at Hull FC. Leeds beating Hull Kingston Rovers so far. Ashton Sims laying the ball off to Darrell Clark. Warrington ahead here and in possession with Bridge. Was that tackle completed? Well, Haraki didn't think so. They're going to give away a penalty here. It's very messy at the play of the ball. Well, it is all the way through, and uh, don't, who do you blame for the fact that we've got all this shimozzle and nonsense at the play? The it's ball, a battle of wills, isn't it? Match after match after match. Is it the coaches? Is it the referees for not standing on it? I'm well, not sure. The, the speed of the play, the ball, most 99 times out of 100 will dictate the winners. You control the speed of your opposition, you slow them down to the pace you want them to play at, and you have a good chance of winning. Nice footwork from Declan Patton, and he tries to go around Scott Taylor again, but uh, the reinforcements are there. But Patterson came out of that line very quickly. They could have, uh, it could have cost them a try. They're going down the left-hand side again with uh, Ratchford. He's Brilliant halted. defense. It Brilliant Eddie from Salford. The referee calls hold, uh, held this time. Ratchford plays the ball. Here comes Hill. Patton gives it to Bridge. Bridge then to Ben Westwood. And Vic Adrian Morley is on. Play on, play on. And the bridge just bounced off Morley then. I, thought, I think Morley thought he was offside. And that's well claimed by Greg Johnson. Very well claimed. Yeah, under a lot of pressure as well. Oh, surely they were offside. Well, they must be the fastest forwards in the world. And I think that Tony Smith... <laughs> Might have a right smile and saying, well, yeah, I think they were uh, out of the blocks just a bit early. I think both teams are having a dig, aren't they? That, that looks a funny play of the ball, but they both look quick. They're trying to be physical. You see, on last tackle, it's a, a charge down a thon, and uh, I think both teams are having a dig here. This is, this is a good game, 23 minutes in. It is. It's unexpectedly good because you look down that Salford uh, team sheet and you think, well, they're struggling a bit with injuries and suspensions. Warrington, they're on uh, on a bit of a roll. You would have thought Warrington would come out here and steamroll them. It's not happening. Well, we've got an atmosphere. We've certainly got a game. I think if you look at Salford's recent performances, they've shown some spirit. That's the one thing they've shown again here. A bit of better organisation with the defence and their attack. When they had that one chance to score, they've taken. But they're going to be tested here now because those three Panthers conceded and this possession now for Warrington is putting them too often in their own half. And one or two of the defenders starting to move a little bit slower. I think well, Salford moves slow when uh, Darrell Clark's in this sort of mood. He gets a beautiful ball away to Ratchford, and Ratchford will weave his way to the line. And Ratchford will score the third Warrington try. Darrell Clark, the engineer in chief of that particular try, took them on in defence. Beautiful short little pass to Ratchford on his shoulder, and he just had the presence of mind to weave his way beyond the Salford defenders and score the try. Warrington increased the lead. Well, they've waited a long time, haven't we, to see Daryl Clark get into the real swing of things, and this is his ability to do it. Look at that. Back on the inside. Like most hookers and most fullbacks, Ratchford is such a versatile player, but look at the quality of this man. Always looking, always looking, get that vision. Is there somebody there? 
he could virtually feel it that the fullback was going to be back on the inside. This is outstanding stuff. This is the Daryl Clark that we saw all last year at Castleton. Oh, Steve, I can watch this all day. When Daryl Clark comes out, that footwork he has, in the blink of an eye, you miss it. And sometimes great players, they just make defenders freeze because defenders aren't sure whether they're going to use the pace, the skill. And Daryl Clark rides that tackle, finds an offload, and, and he's running at big fellas who might be a little bit gassed at this time of the game. Well, just for a moment or two, the, uh, the enthusiasm on the terraces from the Salford Red Devil supporters has just waned a little. And it might have uh, gone the same way as some of the energy of Salford because they put a big effort in here in the opening half hour. Now then, Ratchford, he missed, but he was uh, nine metres further over towards the touchline just a few minutes ago. Can he add the extras here? 14-4 now, it will be 16-4 if he kicks this, 14-6 if he kicks this, and 14-6 it is. Barry just spoke about Daryl Clark riding that tackle, you know, teams measure lots of things now in the gym with the players now on the field, one of the things they can't measure is balance, and when Daryl Clark was hit in those tackles, he managed to ride through them, make two or three more steps to release that pass, and you know what, it very reminds me of the best player that I ever watched play in this country was Ellery Hanley. What made him was so good was the balance that he had. He'd be hit by defenders on the left and the right, ride the tackle, and then progress through very often to score himself. On that occasion, Daryl Clark laid it on a plate and allowed Stefan Ratchford to take the four points. No one need have any doubt now why I got a D in maths all those years ago at school, because 14 and 2 makes 16. So well, I was, 16 six. I was trying to help you, Eddie, but uh, I've got my shoes on. I've gone through fingers and thumbs. Tomorrow, Catalan Dragons against Wigan is live from the south of France in Perpignan. You'll have to press the red buttons on Sky Sports 3 to watch that. We will be busy with the uh, summer bash for the championship clubs. Three matches tomorrow from the 2015 summer bash, live from the Bloomfield Road Stadium in Blackpool, Sky Sports 3, all the way through the afternoon. And on day two, same again, but this time on Sky Sports 5 for day two. Championship Rugby League. Live on Sky Sports this weekend. In all, nine matches live from last night to Sunday night. Don't get much better than that, do you? Smorgasbord. Just get back to that point, Eddie. In regards, you know, just lack of concentration. You know, there's a, there's a problem with the Salford players. And ben Jones Bishop. It's Adrian Morley. Uh, looks like Morley. Struggling. Good work, guys. Keep and, it going. Uh, well, the last thing we'd want to see would be uh, Adrian to leave the stage here. You know, you'd have to imagine Eddie looking at that. It must be an issue with his head. He's involved in that tackle. Put it in front of uh, Ashton Sims and hope for his own safety here. They were able to talk him into coming off the field. Yeah, he just couldn't get out of it, could he? And you can see there that the hip from the big fella Sims has uh, made big impact. And the weight of George Griffin wouldn't have helped much either. But I'm just getting back, you know, you know, we've been praising the fact that uh, Salford came back into the game. And when they lost possession, the lack of concentration, they failed to get back the 10 metres, got penalised, they found themselves under pressure, and guess what? Ratchford comes up with a perfect try. Don't think he wants to leave the scene, Adrian Morley, but the medical staff have had the last word. And that's sensible. And so Chris Foster will come on. Young man who began his career at St Helens. Chris Foster. That's the right decision to bring Adrian Morley off here. Salford now, we've had one chance to attack from this depth. We've got the big line of players. Two waves are going to attack here. Which one's going to take it? Okay, back. Well, the ball went backwards there from the hands, so it's play on. Help! And uh, he is Move, going nowhere, Nile of Alls. There's Liam Hood. And Junior Sow. It's the turnover. 
Did they, did they miss the count there, Salford? Well, it, it looked that way because either way, well, you see the big, the big break wasn't there when Adrian Morley was being sorted out. Yeah, but even so, they've still got to be able to count. I'm sure you would have been trouble yeah, well, on that. Exactly. Yeah. My, they have my complete sympathy. Yeah. But Justin Harris won't have any sympathy whatsoever. He needed to kick into the corner, try to get another set. Twelve minutes to uh, half time. Warrington at the moment with the game in their pockets. They're defending though, aren't they? They're having a dig. I think that was the phrase we used earlier on. Salford having a real a real good effort here against Warrington. I don't count them out, Salford. They, they, they traded sets. We, we talked about it 15 minutes. They went set for set. And they were in with a real shout. Boy, that was a bit high. And uh, Westwood looks at the official. Usually it's the other way around. But uh, he got a real clatter into the second rower. That's a good take. Not the best kick, though. No, it's a bit into no man's land from Chris Bridge. <laughs> bit of a swinging arm there, wasn't it, by Patterson? Johnson just hanging on under pressure from uh, Ormsby and Atkins. Well, that's all they need. Probably one or two players to run with him, but they've got players keen, willing, and able to make ground. Liam Hood now, Theo Fage again. Look, they're going forward. The end of this set, perhaps, with the more attacking and dangerous kick is what they need. Patterson again, that's a nice step, gets away from Lathwaite, Haraki, and they've got them. Ben Taylor and his touch judges have got Warrington for offside to ironic cheers because it's the first penalty of the game for the Salford Red Devils. And that was a good referee as well by Ben Taylor because he allowed them to take the advantage. And he's, uh, he's got the nod, and you can see there that at least half a dozen of the players never made any attempt to get back. But, you know, allow the advantage. And uh, Junior Sow took that ball on himself quickly from the penalty. Ben Jones Bishop to Theo Farge. The charge up the middle again. The big men of both sides testing each other out here. Liam Hood went one way, came the other. Farge gives it to Haraki. Haraki gives it then wide to Walton. That's good smothering and scrambling defence from Warrington. Farge again. Short ball, and it's uh, the big man who's just come on, Carl Foster, but the ball goes straight up in the air, and Ashton Sims has it. And the referee will bring it back for the scrum down, the first knock on against Salford. And Justin Harris is checking his records, checking his computer screens. It is uh, 12 months almost to the day since he took over here. He's offering the ball and he's looking for a support runner. And you'd imagine that Salford was set for a play, set for a shift, trying to test the Warrington defence. Cal Foster, with a little bit of impatience, pulls it out with two hands and can't pull it back in. I mentioned Justin Harris, as I say, almost uh, 12 months to the day since he moved in here. He had a very promising start to the season, but it has been undermined by injuries and suspension. Corey Patterson, Junior Sow returning here, Ranga Chase uh, finishing a seven-match ban. But you look at the list of players who are out, and uh, well, he's, he's done well, albeit the fact that they are second bottom of the table to stay within touch of a possible top four, probable top eight finish come the end of the season. Yeah, and he realised early in that season, uh, Eddie, that uh, they needed to tighten up in their defensive pattern, especially in the first and second mark, and, and that's one area that they've been OK tonight. The trouble is, as I say, they've just come up with those silly errors. Can't let Bridge run with the ball, he gets it away brilliantly to Lathwaite. Lathwaite to Atkins, it all four of that. The referee was bang in line with that too. And now it's knees in the tackle by Scott Taylor. Do you know it's what? a penalty to Warrington. Sorry, I don't think it was forward. I think Ryan Atkins found himself in front of the ball. Great play again from Chris Bridge. That's no, a mile no, forward. No, is it? Ed? Well, he's in front of the, the whitewash as the ball was passed from behind the whitewash. Have a little look at this. If that's not forward, what is? Move, George! It's a miss. Right here, boys. Okay. Hill to his feet will play the ball. Clark finds Patton, Patton then to Bridge. Bridge gives it to Ratchford, Ratchford to Lathwaite. He's not tackled, now he is. He was thinking about it, a double movement, but thought better of it. 
Bridge again, he showed it to Asatazi, running laterally again, Chris Bridge. Three movements! Uh, Theo Farge in with the tackle. Daryl Clark, Ryan Atkins. Again, scrambling defence is the oh, phrase no this man! time. Solo for the from Salford Red Devils. Solo from Clark, no, pans it out onto the right hand side. Two Hill via Five. Patton. Move! Last tackle coming up here yeah, for line, Warrington, line, then line. camped on the Salford line. It's with Ratchford, the kick out okay. wide is looking for Kevin Penny. And the kick out wide, the ball was knocked oh, down come, yeah. by He's Ben Jones Bishop. No doubt He's about it, a good position as well, Thaler. The uh, crowd don't like it, but uh, no doubt about it. the winger just got a fingertip to it, went forward. Well, what about the technique of Kevin Penny? He's got a basketball background. Ben Jones Bishop, reckon he's a good four or five inches taller than him. And it's a real contest. It's always more difficult for the defending jumper. I would also say it was made more difficult uh, for Kevin Penny by Junior Sauer running across him and almost trying to trip him up on the way through. So Salford are looking to get away with that. Richard Agar, Tony Smith, head coach and coach at Salford. Down to Terry O'Connor quickly. Cheers, Eddie. Well, Richie Myler is a, he's not going to be coming back in this game. He's run out of time on the sideline and Warrington aren't going to take any chances with him. Also, Adrian Morley, well, he's going to be coming back on in the second half. He was assessed in the changing room and there's no problem with him. And another injury on the bench, well, say injury, a split to the eye of Ben Harrison, but he would just been turned up and he's ready to go, Ed. Thanks, Terry. Daryl Clark, Roy Asatazi, bounces off the first, there are two more there. Foster was one of them. Clark gives it to Patton, they laid siege to the Salford line here. Westwood! And he's clawed back by all those red jerseys. It's, it's vigorous and it's enthusiastic, it's scrambling, you just wonder how long can it last as Asatazi drives the ball in again. Hold back in the match against the Saints as Asatazi plays the ball here on the last tackle to Daryl Clark. Clark then to Patton, slides the kick in, and Ben Curry went for it and lost it. I think he tried to put the ball down and it may have just ricocheted off one of the Salford's players' legs. I think it's a fullback, Evels. By the way, it was a neat little kick, wasn't it? You know, they really showed some grit there, Salford. They've had to hang on. They've been on their own line for a period of time there. It was a great kick, but again, they're making enough of an effort to make life hard for Warrington to score some points. You can see here, they are drained. It's single man carries, but they're enthusiastic efforts. Well, the most important thing, Phil, oh, they've got the penalty. Is that they got themselves to the halfway line, which they haven't, uh, they haven't done quite often in this first stanza. Well, Chris Hill penalised, and uh, a bit like London buses, the penalties for Salford. They've come along in twos. Low! Low! What can Foster do here? Surrender. Well, I just get the impression, impression Eddie, that they're, they're, they're just going to set up for a set pattern move. Nice little drop off ball there to Adam Long. It was almost through. Coach King doing well to hang on to his ankles. Here they come again in the shape of George Griffin. That's good running as well. Liam Hood gets it away to Farge. Farge then inside. It comes to Foster. Good tackle low down by Clark to keep him out. Still two left in the back here for the Red Devils. And it comes to Farge. I think spread it wide. They've got great chances here. They've got great chances here with Julian Sauer. Frustration for Chris Bridge. The referee just having a chat with his touch. Is everything all right with that? And yes, the decision is everything was all right with that. And Julian Sau on his comeback from suspension. Gets the try for Yestin Harris's team. Uh, Junior South back from injury, I beg your pardon. Looks as though he's picked up a, a little bit of an injury as well as we're going over, but it's a beautiful little dummy. Had a little shimmy. It was far too much. Hill, well, I'm not so sure he had, he had a hand in that. Either way, Salford were not complaining. Got himself in a good position. That's good work. This is a good dummy. Nothing that Bridge could do about that. They stayed out wide, not happy with it, Bridge, but got to give a bit of quality the way that he threw that dummy and had the power to get over. Well, Wella Haraki just gives an early ball to Junior Sau. Doesn't look to take it to the line, doesn't look to tell any lies. He just gives Junior Sau an early ball, then it's a two-on-two. Two. 
And whilst he's running on that angle, the defender in front of him doesn't know whether to go out to the person he's going to pass or stick on his man, and it's too late, he's already over the line. Well, Corey Patterson knows the route here because it's almost in exactly the same position as his uh, first conversion of his own try. He kicked that with apparent ease, just swung the right boot at it and go over the top of the bar. Can he repeat the dose here? Yes, he can. Yes, he can. That's a tremendous kick from Corey Patterson. They won't go away, will they, the Salford Red Devils? No, and it was good play as well. Remember the interchange as they utilise the forwards down the middle of the pitch, and when you do that, it often sucks in the defence out wide. And you'll see that Bridge went for him, allowed him to just get through that gap. He was furious with Bridge. Penny stayed out wide, he was looking for the winger. Junior Sow wouldn't be very happy either because he's uh, had his ankle taped and he's limping quite heavily on this left wing now for Salford. Well, they've got just over 60 seconds, haven't they, to get to half-time, and it's been a brilliant first 40 when you consider how much of this game has been played close to Salford's try line. Boyd have had lots of chances to score more points. Their attack's been poor, and on that occasion, the defence wasn't good enough to handle what looked like a simple play, passing the ball out wide and the big centre crashing over. Yes, it's a moral victory in many ways for the Salford Red Devils, even though they're four points adrift on the scoreline. Jason Walton has looked lively down that right-hand side all night. Leo Farge gets the ball into the middle of the field. This is Adam Walton. Psychologically, it's a huge lift for both the coach, Jason Harris, and, and his players. A real mess around the play of the ball. It's been, uh, been that sort of a game, hasn't it? Kick into the corner, they're quite happy. He was unlucky with that, Farge, because it just drifted the wrong side of the post. Warrington anxious to get on with it. And here is Kevin Penny. Thinking about those two Corey Patterson conversions, you have to ask why he's not been kicking in Michael Dobson's absence more often. Because he's not been playing a lot of the games. Well, no, he hasn't, that's true, but... When he has been on, he's kicked well. Three. Yeah, well, Dobson's got uh, a pretty good record, Eddie. And Dobson's not played very much either. No, that's for sure. That's been the, the story of Salford's season. There's the half-time siren. I don't think he's too happy, but, uh, Tony Smith. I think the word that best sums up Warrington's season is erratic. That's probably the best word to sum it up so far. More than good enough to beat Leeds twice, of course, home and away. But they've lost to the likes of Hull, Woodness, Castleford and the Catalan Dragons this year. And here, Salford are giving them a real run for their money. It was 6-0, uh, courtesy of Curry's try, levelled up two minutes later by Corey Patterson. Ormsby's try, Ratchford's try, things going Warrington's way. Junior Sow, just before half-time, good contest, 12-16. Super League Friday and we're watching a stirring contest as the Salford Red Devils just trail the Warrington Wolves by 16 points to 12 as we prepare for the start of this second half. Just to tell you what's coming up for Salford and why this is such a vital game for them, they kick the Magic weekend off against Witness next Saturday, then they embark on a run of three straight away games, St Helens, Wakefield, Wigan, then they have the Catalan Dragons here on the 5th of July. So a couple of points tonight would do them the world of good. Corey Patterson about to get the second half underway. Stevo, where's your money running? Are they going to win this? They nearly did it again, Warrington from the kickoff. Are they going to win this, Salford, or will all this defence that they had to do in the first half be just too much to bear? I think you've made the, the correct assumption, is that, and that was good work, wasn't it, there by Ratchford? Nearly came up with the error, second one in this particular game. Yeah, uh, I mean, you've got to get, give a lot of credit to the way that Salford have defended. They didn't get many opportunities down against the Warrington side, and uh, they may tire in the in the last 15 minutes. Radio Morley's back on. Obviously, they've done all the checks with him as far as the uh, the head injury was concerned, and they're happy, and he's happy that he is uh, fit to play on. 
I don't think they were too impressed then, Warrington, with that uh, grab of the leg of Chris oh, wait, Hill. Wait, wait, wait. Pushing at the knee, didn't he? That's uh, that's what they're concerned about. He certainly looked as though he pinpointed it. Saints just ahead still at uh, Hull FC. Hull on a good run. It's a big test for them this tonight. Oh dear! Oh dear! He couldn't touch that Theo Farge because Johnson had touched it. He was in an offside position. So Warrington get the possession back, and what's more, it is six to go from the signal by referee Ben Thaler. That's a huge error at the start of this second half for Salford. Roy yeah. Asatazi. Now they have to defend again very stoutly here to the Red Devils. Declan Patton gets the ball away to Bridge. Bridge then finds Ratchford. Ratchford goes wide to Kevin Penny. And Ben Jones Bishop saw to it that he was going nowhere. And again, it's an, it's an error. Well, that was a shocker. That should have been a penalty. Surely he played the ball incorrectly. Well, then they've lost it forward. Eventually, the referee said so. Salford will get this ball. And again, I think if you're the Salford coach, you said that's been brilliant, brilliant defence on our own line. If you're the Warrington coaching staff, you might be critical of the attack. He didn't fire well in the first half. You know, it's, it's amazing, Eddie. This is the side here, Warrington, who are good enough to beat the league leaders twice already this year, home and away. I can only come to the conclusion that they're not applying themselves, they haven't taken the, the attitude into this game that they need to be at their best to win it. Because their, their, their ability and performance is greater than what we witnessed in 40 minutes. Let's see what was said during half-time by the two men in charge, the coaches. Terry. Cheers, Eddie. Both of these sides are desperate for the for the two points, and they're both very confident. Salford and, and Yistin Harris has said that lads, you just need to run hard, tackle hard. We gifted them two tries and make sure that we, we're disciplined and we work really hard for each other. And they do genuinely believe that they can win this game. Warrington, while well, speaking with Tony Smith and Richard Agar, he said, well, they've had a couple of lapses of concentration. We've got to make sure that we switch on for the full second half because this team that we're playing against in Salford had a very good side. If we get some decent field position, we could be confident and we could go on to win this game. As I was saying in the first half, no Richie Miley, he won't be coming back on. And Ben Harrison, well, he won't return as well. They're not going to take any chances. He split his eye in the first half, but they're not going to take any chances in the second half. And just a little mention to, uh, to Richie Miley, I was going down the tunnel to see how he was and I bumped into his wife, Helen Skelton, who's just got two more weeks to go before she gives birth. So I just calmed her down and said, Look, don't worry about it, and if your waters do go, don't call me. Dr. Spock O'Connor, thank you. Three and a half minutes of this second half has gone. Well, he's, he's, he's right, Eddie. You certainly wouldn't call him. And this was just that good work then by Clark. That looked a bit of a high shot as well there by Rocky. A little feel of the chin. Didn't miss, Rocky. Yeah, Haraki and Clark were teammates at Castleford last year. Here's a high kick over the top. All two are coming for this. Night Evels took in charge of the situation. Great work and good work by uh, Evels to say, it's mine, get out of the way. He rode that challenge well and all. He's a very physical player, Night Evels. You need to be brave under those balls. He knew that an oncoming defending player from Warrington were going to give him a clout, but he caught the ball, rode the tackle. Well done, that young man. Solid run forward again. This time it was uh, George Griffin. And the kick. Just a bit of a fly hack, really. A a desperation effort, but uh, Ratchford will give it to Ormsby. Well, you can't fault Telford's effort, can you, really? They, they really are putting themselves about. And uh, I, I just keep thinking to myself, you know, can they keep this up, this defensive effort? Because the last 15 minutes, it's going to be very, very difficult for them. They have had the fortnight off, steve -O, since we last saw them. So that might help. Three, We've got a bit of... A uh, bit more petrol in the tank for what's to come later on in this match. As I say, they could do with the win with that tough month that they've got ahead. They've got virtually three away games, if you include the Magic Weekend. By the way, Magic Weekend next week, uh, Warrington will play St. Helens in one of the marquee fixtures of the event. Paul pass. Steve, well, you make an interesting point about whether Salford will fatigue here, whether the, the defending they're doing, particularly in their own half, they're being stress-tested near their own line. But I think the pressure may mount on the rivals here. 
another four pass. They're the side that are expected to win this game. As the time ticks away and the score stays as close as this, maybe there's more pressure on the Warrington team than there is on the Salford side. It's great occasions in sport being the underdog if you're close enough in the contest. I think I agree, Phil. I think physically this game will take a toll on both sides, but it's about your mental fitness, your mental strength. How much focus and concentration have you got in the little pieces, the little aspects of the game? Salford, as I said in the first half, when they trade sets with Warrington, it will make Warrington nervous. Salford, although second bottom of the table, they do have a game in hand on those above them. And uh, that will be against Hulkingston Rovers, who are still going uh, big guns in the cup. And uh, well, it could be a, a problem to fit that fixture in between now and the end of the season, but we'll see. Quick play, the ball is needed to here, and that's what they've got. Liam Hood is wide to Farge again, and then he finds Evels, who goes to the left to find Ben Jones Bishop. He's had a relatively quiet evening so far. Can always explode into life, though, at any given moment. Huraki into Griffin again. This has got to be a good kick. Now, will they opt for the height, or will it go for the in-goal area? Just dribble it in. They're not doing any of that, they're running it with Patterson. Now they might get the kick away. Well, a Huraki, there it is. Theophage is after that. Darrell Clark go to the rescue. But they turn it over in a good position, Salford. Yeah, that's as good as getting a, a return of the six, but uh, good work. Oh, silly play there by Morley. Well, that's, that's the line speed that we were talking about. We were marvelling at. The athleticism of the players in the first 20 minutes, Adrian Morley's with those big lolloping steps of his, he lunges, it's George King who feels the full effect of it. That was a little high, to say the least. Adrian Morley is 38 years of age. You should know better. At that age, Barry? No, it feels like it's worth more than a penalty to me, that. That, that's got to be close to taking 10 minutes on the sideline. I'm with you, I'm with you, Phil. I think what's probably saved him is the, the contact on the ball initially. Um, certainly ended up in the head. And the referee does have that option, but chose not to do it in this occasion. Well, uh, Adrian Morley, I think I'm right in saying he uh, was in a bit of trouble with the disciplinary last time we were here. A, a head butt, he took, a, he took an early guilty plea. And that's why he's playing here tonight. That's, that's what you get with Adrian, though, isn't it? Yeah, he's, uh, he's always been a tough hombre. Right? That's oh, for Joe. His knee, his right knee then. Oh, it looked bad. I hope I'm wrong here, but that looked terrible. Well, Chris Hill and his reaction, his reaction really does tell its own story. Well, you often get that when you have four defenders in the tackle. He's stationary. One or two are pulling in one direction, one or two another. Those Griffins around the leg, and look, oh, oh that's not going to be good. No, the, the ligament certainly take it. Oh, it's that, that planted right foot there, Phil. Well, could oh. be his ankle, could be his knee. Yeah. Either way, his, yeah, no his body's foul. almost it's bent in half. There's no, no, no suggestion of foul play in that, no? Yeah, I'll go with that. I don't think there is, but I think yeah. what's no. interesting the game needs to debate is how we, how we can... I don't know, make, make tackling a little bit safer because if you're going to put three or four men in a tackle and you're going to get them to the ground, we need to find a way for the sport to continue to be safe. I, I, th I think that if you made every play and you said, right, what you've got to do is you've got to... I know it's a bit revolutionary, but you've got to touch the ball with your foot when you play it. It may well shave a second or two off that play of the ball, but it'll make players accountable for the play of the ball technique. Everybody gets back set. The more you look at that, the nastier it gets for Chris Hill. I think there, there is a solution to this, and it's all about the wrestle. The more time they have with the player upright, the more players are getting in there, the more you're going to get tackles like that and injuries like that. You're right, but the, the longer they are stood upright, the more players are looking to get involved. Absolutely. So what you do is you call hell, and if they take them to ground after you've called hell, you penalise them. All right? That'll stop people, it'll make them tackle you to the ground a lot quicker, and therefore we get away from that situation. If players are, are frightened of being caught in an upright tackle, they're going to be out of position on the next uh, on the next play. They will get them to the ground quicker and they won't get situations. 
where, all about where, is, where has all this wrestle come from? Has it come from the NRL in Australia? Because I've not watched this game as long as you four have. Of course, but it's an evolution. Players are always looking for the edge. Coaches are always trying to coach the edge. It's been around a long, long time. And uh, yes, the Australians perfected it. There was also a period whereby the, uh, the players were deliberately holding a man not putting him to the ground but spinning him around so that the third man could hit into the rib area they had to assess that they, they tried to eliminate that they did for a while and i'm with you baz it's, it's all about the fact that the, some of these coaches they say just hold the opposition down so that our defense can get themselves set up it's up to the official to take control uh, take control and uh, get the whistle out get the penalty going well, win, lose or draw, this is an expensive night for Warrington. They've already lost Myler, Harrison and now Hill. So they're down on numbers and Ben Westwood with kick. And Evolds makes sure he has control of the ball before picking it up. And he gives it to Johnson. That's good work by Roy Asatazi. And the most important thing as far as uh, Warrington is concerned is that They've had to rearrange and rejig their attacking and their defensive patterns. And it's not going to be easy to do that because uh, this Salford side, they, they just get a feeling that there's a sniff that in with a great chance. And when you get runs like that. Yes, that was Junior Sow, and he will play the ball to Liam Hood. Yofage again turns it back into the arms of Patterson. We've reached tackle number five, so here comes the last. And Farge will drift the kick in behind Ratchford, but that is just too long. And, uh, we're all chasing that. He's such a competitor, Theo Farge. And, you know, Liam Hood, the number 24 for Salford, he's having more of a more, more and more of a bearing on this game. Keeps jumping out from dummy half, giving the time and space to players like Theo Farge. I think it's only a matter of time before he really does unlock the door for Salford. Daryl Clark taking advantage there of some markers in offside position. He loses the ball. It was Robertson. Has he lost the ball? Was it stolen by Patterson? This will go upstairs to have a very close look at and sure. Well, it's a one on one. It's a one on one, but did Patterson reach the ball out and knock the ball forward towards the no Warrington try. post? That's right. That's the only thing we'll be looking at. The They've got no try. They've got no try on the field. Salford. They've worked so hard here in this match. It's the man involved to make the tackle. At that point, I don't think there's any effort on the ball. Not at that point. And I think, well, it comes off Corey Patterson at the last. Which direction is it going? Well, it's off, it's off Clark's knee. I think this will be OK. No, but I think Corey Patterson touches it whilst it's hitting Daryl Clark's knee. It depends on the direction it comes out. Loses the ball. Yeah. Well, Patterson's Patterson's arm is definitely his hand is definitely pulling at that ball. Uh, Watch it now, Stuart. It's what direction is it going in? That's certainly it is the hit Daryl Clark. We need to know what uh, what direction that ball's pulled out in. Well, this is another another very very difficult decision for the video referees to make. We had two shockers last night. Well, if the video ref can't decide on a forward pass, are we not asking for him to do something similar here? Well, no, because the, the pass is slightly different because it has momentum. Well, he's pulled that out towards his own post. And we have to also remember, it's been sent up as a no-try, so I think there's not enough evidence there, or there's enough evidence to disallow that try. Well, well they're not going to the grounding. Screen. No, they're not looking at the grounding, so it's chalked off, much to the dismay of the Salford supporters, to the dismay of Easton Harris, and to the annoyance of the would-be try scorer. And the relief of Daryl Clark, because I saw him as the Patterson went under the post, he had his head in his hands. Thought he'd put his side behind, but with half an hour to go, the real spirit here on show with the Salford, and they're certainly going to give us a game. That could have been a game-changer that moment, it really <laughs> yeah. could. We've got to go down to Terry, he's got some news for us. Yeah, well, Chris Hill didn't want to come off the pitch, if you can believe it or believe it not. Cal Fitzpatrick run on and said, mate, you've got to come off. He wanted to stay on. The physio is now just checking his, his right ankle, strapping it up. Before they went in for that try, or before they went in for that disallowed try, they, they weren't going to risk him, and they weren't going to risk him because of a big game next week. But apparently now he could be coming back onto the pitch. There's only one fit player, as you said, and if Warrington go on to win this game, Eddie, they're going to have to do it the tough way. 
And we've seen here Brad Dwyer, the man that they have bought back from the London Broncos. And I did say that, I said bought, not brought. He was their player, Brad Dwyer. He went on a season-long loan. Mickey Hyam went to Lee. They needed another hooker, and they had to dig into the bank balance to pay London Broncos some compensation. And here he is, back at Warrington on a two-year deal. They had 50 grand in the bank, though, Eddie, didn't they? They earned 50 grand from Mickey Hyam coming or going to Lee, so they had a bit of, bit of money to play with. They did. It's, it's strange. It seems very strange to me that you have to buy back your own player, but I can understand why. Oh, that's a great race by Ratchford and a very brave take by Niall Evans. Yeah, he just timed it right, didn't he, Stephen Ratchford? This game's wrapped up. Is it ever? Well, you can just, as I said earlier, you know, you, you, it's just that Salford feel as though they're going to have got a sniff on. Ooh, oh, nearly away. He nearly was away. It was a Good very job, important George tackle. King. Yeah, important tackle that. Ten apiece at the KC Stadium, Harlem Saints. And Leeds leading 28-16 against Hull KR. This is a 40-20 attempt. Is this a 40-20 attempt? I think it is. Tremendous stuff. And they rush to Theo Farge. And they slap him on the back, pat him on the head. We talked about a game changer when the try was disallowed. How about this? Wonderful stuff. Made sure it was behind the line. And it just, just ricocheted through. Oh, he's had a wonderful game. He's had a wonderful season. He's had so much responsibility on his shoulders. Well, this week, Salford let the head of youth leave. Alan Hunt had been at the club. I'm not sure whether it was he or somebody else responsible for identifying and recruiting Theo Vars to this club. But what a brilliant and brave decision that was. For a young Frenchman, nobody expected anything from him. But in the, more, in the matter of just a couple of seasons, he's developed into a star in the Super League. He has, and he arrived here as a youngster from the Catalan Dragons, and he, you're right, Phil, he was 17 years of age, which is, is quite an effort to come from one country to another and to try and make a name for yourself in this game. In that position in that as well. In that position too, yes. And to cope with the language as well. Not only has he got to deal with that information, he's got to interpret it, translate it and give it back. Here he is again on the ball. He's seen it so many times tonight. This is Scott Taylor now. Five metres away from the line, right underneath the Warrington post. Salford denied by the video referee, rightly, I think, just before. Can they get something here from this latest attack? He's scheming, oh, isn't he, Theo Farge? He is, it's nine levels again. He's the key man, Eddie. Hood gets the ball away, a drive in by Walton. Oh, oh he's lost it, it over the line. It was an impossible yeah. attempt. Oh, it would have been better just trying to keep hold of the ball. Well, it was a fourth player, wasn't it? They only had one more after this. He got close, he's run hard today. I don't think he can be too critical of him trying, but now again, that penalty to allow Warrington away from their own half of the field, and Stefan Ratchford wants to speed it up, and the two of his teammates want to slow it down. Well, Justin Harris said at half-time, he said that, the, you know, Tez down on the sideline said that Justin Harris had made it quite, quite clear, you know, to Salford stop cut out the errors and I'm afraid they got themselves offside just lack of concentration at the vital moment and a hand in the ruck which is a which is a crime isn't it and it's Corey Patterson who was the perpetrator of that crime who was involved in that tackle here is Ashton Simmons right on halfway Warrington they're now into uh, Salford territory, Three. courtesy Three. of the run from King. But Warrington are quite happy to go in through the basics now. They're All probably right. just thinking about the fact that uh, try to keep them down, they've got to make a break from Bridge. It's a good break from Bridge, it really is, but he, everyone had overrun him, or at least the support had, but Bridge, with the presence of mind to stand and then turn and make a few more metres, here is Dwyer, and Dwyer, is pulled down again by Theo Farge. He's all over the place tonight, Theo Farge. He's involved in everything. Nice little kick. Oh, and he was then... Shoulder to shoulder. Yeah, was he pushed off the ball? I Theo think... Farge is obstructed the player, yes. hasn't he? Yes, he... You can use the shoulders, Stu, if you are running in the same direction. That's like this one right across him and just obstructed him going forward. No, he's not. See from this, you can run side by side, but you can't run across somebody like that. And Curry is the man... Right here, boys. Presen uh, presence it was, and he was impeded. Now then, Stuart, Mom. what about the professional foul, and what Go. about the ten minutes in the sin bin? It on. deserved it. Well, again, it's the option, but I don't think there's any Move. chance of Get Curry there, actually George. scoring that. I, you know, I think uh, the ball was going to go dead anyway. Bridge, Bridge finds Ratchford. 
Rashford can't get away from Huraki. Right here, lads. Discipline. Brad Dwyer in. Go. A dummy half again. Oh, and it went in Play front up. of two and bounced its Don't way to Ashton Sims. Don't and Sims up. manages to get the ball away to Kevin Penny. He then finds Ben Curry. Movement, Adam! Right here. Right here. And Dwyer again to Sims. Patton taking on four. Adrian Move. Morley. Dwyer waits, looks for the runners, it's Ashton Sims, he gets the offload away, oh, and uh, Walton did well to pick that up. Yeah, and a lot of pressure as well. Doesn't look too concerned, does he, Tony Smith? He knows that uh, they're going to have to get the ball forward. There's a neat little kick through, wasn't it, there by Rashford? He's had a fine game as well as a full-back, both in defence and attack. But they know they're in the game, that's for sure. They are in a game and they've got 23 minutes of it remaining. And we still await the first points of this second half. Chris Hill is trying to convince everybody he's fit enough to come back. That's amazing if he gets back on the paddock after what we witnessed, the way that the, the leg was just twisted and under pressure. Another great kick from Corey Patterson to relieve the pressure. Here's Ratchford. He's on his own there, is Ratchford. Well, is it, we made the mention that uh, perhaps with all that defence, especially in that first half from Salford, they may tire in the final quarter. I just get the impression, looking at some of the uh, the Warrington players, they're doing it tough as well. Good strength from Ormsby on show there. Here's Dwyer again. That's good play. He knows he's injected a lot of uh, speed into this Warrington attack. Patton bounces off Morley. Tries to resist Scott Taylor, who scrags him to the ground. Dwyer again, here is Ashton Sims. I'm sure that Tony Smith, the Warrington coach, will be looking for the likes of Stephen Ratchford to just come up with a, a wonderful step, maybe, or oh, as a kick through. This is going to be dodgy. Oh, He's been good, hasn't he, Jim yeah. Walton today? Jason Walton has been good. Lost the ball, though, one-on-one -on -one steal. What about the hit from Dwyer? Oh, boy, you talk about game changers. Many wonder the entire think, team are coming up to uh, yeah, Dwyer it was. Well, was it ever? And what about that all for the all the Salford players just giving Jason Walton a, a tap on the back? So both players, both teams still believe that they're in with a chance of winning this game. Great shot. And Jason Walton, who a couple of moments ago tried to get the ball over. He's gone from trying to score a try, he picked up the ball a minute or two ago, and the former London Rugby League player Brad Dwyer is right back in the big time. Commentators Kersfield, we gave Jason Walton a big rap then, didn't we? But he has been good for all of that, he has been good, but this is pressure again. Well, Warrington's attack hasn't been great. I wouldn't even say it's been good at this point, but they just need to get over somewhere, and that's what the supporters want, as Atkins tries to power with his legs. Atkins, it's a great run, can they pull him back? Yes, they can. But look where they are. And there's Dwyer again, and back it comes to Patton, and Patton will find Bridge. They smothered, though, this scrambling Salford defence is so far, and here's another commentator's curse, so far working a treat. They thought about getting the pass away to George King, thought better of it in the end as he fell. Now Curry, he's gone through two, and here is Ormsby. Ormsby in the corner. Second try for Gene Ormsby. Could be a killer blow that for Warrington. And it all came about, Eddie, from the substitute Brad Dwyer. That defence, and he caught one right in the mush as well from the from the elbow. But Ben Kerry, the supplier. This is a knock-on as it you'll see Brad Dwyer come in. That has been the turning point, because it looked as though the Salford side were taking control. This is nice in and out. This is, he's had a great game, Ben Curry, as well. Good finish by Ormsby. Well, at this moment in time, if Steve McNamara was picking an England side, I'm sure Ben Curry will be very close to making the starting team. He's again been involved in everything they've done to score points. And he lays on a nice pass here for winger Gene Ormsby. Playing on the left-hand side might seem fun for Wolves at the moment, especially if you're outside this big fella. Very important four points for Warrington at that point.
Yes, important uh, try for Gene Ormsby. He uh, didn't score against Dewsbury last week, but he has now got uh, eight tries in his last six appearances. 13 last year, when he was also out at Swinton and North Wales on uh, dual registration. So an important uh, kick coming up for Ratchford here. And you've also got to make the point, Eddie, that, uh, you know, Tony Smith, he knew what he was doing when he brought back from London Brad Dwyer because he really has injected himself, this youngster. Very, very impressive in the short period that he's been out on the field of play. Well, so he didn't have an option, did he? He needed another hooker. And a big step also for him from London Broncos in the Championship back into Super League. Coming on late in the game, must be said, but... Uh, Relishing the opportunity and a new two-year deal. By the way, just a word about uh, Ben Curry. Uh, Phil giving him claims for an England cap. He is an Irish international at the moment, but that's a great kick I, from Ratchford. I, I, I pardon, no, no, we get straight my excuses and, no, and apologies. Sir. No, no, Ben. There's pl plenty of switched allegiances. Plenty of switched allegiances. Much to Mr. McDermott's uh, displeasure. Well, there's some quality players on shore. He's done it as well, hasn't he? There's some quality players on shore. Fantastic. Really enjoy watching some of the young players in the game at the minute. Ben Curry in particular. But we just picked up on our mics when Gene Ormsby had scored the try and he got back in Oldley, thanked George King, the big front rower, pumped his legs and made it difficult. Here he is again on the ball. He made it difficult for the Salford defenders to get organised, get back in time to see what was going to unfold, and that was given, and that allowed the time and space for Ben Curry. Oh, that ball has come out, and knock-on has been forced by Salford on Kevin Penny. Yeah, just squeezed out. They got the numbers there. Now Forcer uh, put the, the heavy on it. The sheer weight, he just couldn't keep hold of it because of the winger. Eddie, I've got a solution to your problem about Ben Curry. It's he's an, island, he's an island international. Why don't we play under the flag of Great Britain? And then we don't have any of this nonsense. Yeah, none yeah. of, the, none of the, the, the Danny Brough, the Welsh players, the Irish and Scottish players can still play at that elite level against Australia and New Zealand. Here, here. Common sense from a prop forward. <laughs> don't Corey, be too shocked, Steve. Oh. Corey Patterson. And Liam Hood will come into centre field, Haraki to Farge and Wong, oh, gets the way, ball away brilliantly to Adam Wong, he will score! Well done, Adam Wong! Is he short? Is he short? I think it's on the head of line, don't you? He's happy, he thinks it's hit the line. Yes, they've given a try on the field. Sure it does hit that line. Does it hit the line? That's what he wants to know. Another big, big call from the video referee here. Has Evels got this? Well, he's got his hand on the ball. Yes, yes! That is a try. No problem there. And what great position by Ben Thaler. But on that angle, it looked at normal speed, of course, but it may have been short, and this will be T.R.Y. And listen to the crowd here. Niall Evels. Well, a couple of tries in the cup, eight tries so far in the whole season, seven in the Super League now, so that makes nine. He was out on loan at Barrow last year, five tries in five for them, nine levels. He's just breathed life again into the Red Devils' challenge here. Oh, the offload was superb. And you've got to give a lot of credit to the fullback there. You talk about second effort. What's this? It's Jordan Wallman, in it, Steve -O. He finds that offload, and we got the message that Yestin Harris had sent down. I want you to run hard and tackle hard. Well, certainly, Jordan Wall, as we see another conversion go over. He ran hard, he found a pass, and he's put his team back in this game. It's amazing. Salford will not go home. Hey, when you consider they've had a little bit less ball than Warrington, they've done as many times to attack. They're doing very well to make the Wolves nervous. Very, very good finish now to this game. Brilliant spirit on shore from Salford. Now levels an exciting player, the top try scorer for Salford this year. And I guess the coach would like another one from him in the next 10 or 15 minutes. Well, they've never been in front yet in this match, Salford, but they are hanging on grimly. What have they got left in the last 
16 minutes or so. How about the fun's up good oh, value for the That was a silly high shot, but uh, Ben Thaler says no. Came off the shoulder. Horaki will take it forward again. You've also got to give a lot of credit to this Wolf uh, Wellington outfit, Eddie. You know, with so many injuries, they've had to rejig everything, but I'm taking not. He's coming oh. back, Chris Hill. Well, this is amazing. Well, Steve, I watched him warm up, and I'm not a body language expert, but he looked like he was uncomfortable, to say the least. But I was going to say, haven't the fans had value for money? Yes. It's been an outstanding contest, as we see tough, tough Chris Hill come back on the pitch. Yeah, they've troubled the crowd since we were last here. And admittedly, it's almost a buy one, get one free evening, but for all of that, it's a penalty to Warrington. And again, just a Salford edge their way back into this game. They come up with a silly, silly effort like that. Why did you have Buddy Foster have to do that second lunge on the back of the head? He'd already done the completion of the tackle. Warrington have had their ninth penalty blown by Ben Thaler just, and Salford have had two. So the penalty count is very much against the Red Devils as well. Hill, how on earth he's walking, never mind running strongly like that after that ankle injury, the Lord only knows, but he is. And here is Patton, now it's with Bridge. He's been a, a thorn in the Salford side all night as well, this fellow. Another England stroke Irish international. Clark has returned to the fray. Sims will drive it in, the big Fijian. Wants to get up and play it quickly. Watch for Curry out on this left-hand side. Here's Dwyer, he's going to try and pitch one, and he does! Brad Dwyer! Well, he might easily have been in a hotel in Blackpool tonight, preparing for the Championship Summer Bash weekend. As it is, he's beginning a new life at Warrington, and he has marked his return to Warrington and his new two-year deal with a try. Tremendous stuff. Wonderful dummy. Everybody, including myself, thought he was going to fling this ball out on the left-hand side, and that is a great effort. Boy, will he remember this game, and he has every right to do that. He thought his defensive tackle had made sure that the Wolves had kept the vital two points. Well, it certainly has done that now. I just cannot see Salford coming back after that. The heads are down when they have the opportunity. And again, Salford pay the price for giving away another silly, silly penalty. Steve, I think it was a really smart read from Brad Dwyer. The fullback Niall Evelds is an A defender. His job is to be where that ball is, anticipating that there's going to be a long shift. And Brad Dwyer, out of the corner of his eye, may well have seen the body language of Nile Evans will get a look, another look at it after the conversion, but a great spot, spot from the young hooker. Well, we've just seen the first Super League try for Brad Dwyer since a win at Castleford in 2013. He has played in 12 championship matches for London this season. He had 10 matches as a substitute for Warrington last year. He got a try in the cup last week at Dewsbury. And he thought he was going back. Then the Mickey Hyam transfer went through. Warrington needed a hooker, paid the money, back he came. Try. And that's worth £50,000, that try. It sure is, Eddie. As far as I'm concerned. It's been a fine effort to come back. As I say, it's, uh, you know, Warrington, it would have been very, very difficult for Tony Smith to try to rejig the outfit. Especially with the fact that, you know, the likes of Richie Myler, he went off early, injured. Did you see the eyes of Brad Dwyer then when he picked that ball up? He noticed who was an air defender. Another deep kick-off, fielded by Patton. Here comes Ashton Sims again. Looks like the league leaders are just about home and hosed against Hull KR. I don't think Warrington will be breathing easy just yet. They've still got 12 minutes and a little bit remaining. This is better. Keep it as we are. Go. But uh, that's an important defeat, if that be the right way to describe it, for Hulkingston Rovers, because they, with Salford and the Black and Whites, are involved in this 
Bottom four tussle to stay away from the middle eights in another, August and September. Another good run there from Daryl Clark, and uh, this is where you just control the game. And that's a good kick. It's uh, made it awkward for the full-back. Look at that chase. That'll be pleasing the coach, Tony Smith. Is that a big game tonight, Chris Bridge? Yeah. They've had to dig, dig deep. They've had to go into different positions. Ratchford, we've seen him in at the dummy half position, taking a, the hooking role for a while. But the, the most amazing thing is, Eddie, that how on earth is Chris Hill out there? Must have a great deal of elasticity in his joints because oh. it bent backwards, but soon recovered. Watching haven't been playing well recently in Super League. That's a pretty obvious statement. They were lucky to beat Witness. They lost by a point to Hull. And I guess one of the signs we sometimes say at the end of the year, Eddie, if they walk out down the road from here at Old Trafford, is that they were able to win games when they weren't at the best. They will need to improve, and maybe they will when we get to the Magic Weekend on this performance. But it looks as though tonight, even though they've had serious injuries, they're going to do just enough to win this game. Finishing the last ten minutes confidently and in control of the match will please, I think, the coaching staff of Richard Agar and Tony Smith, if they can do that now. So the test is for their concentration now, the next 600 seconds. And it is uh, St. Helens, as I say, at the Magic Weekend, who are waiting for them next week. But uh, before all that, we have the Catalan Dragons against the Wigan Warriors tomorrow at 5, minutes to 5, Sky Sports 3. But press your red button for that on your handset, because we'll be busy at Blackpool. Dwyer was almost through again then. Clark at dummy half. And the reigning Man of Steel goes down 30 metres away. From the Salford line. Ready, mate. Ready. Just Wait, look go, for the go, uh, the touch go. line here. That's all they need. Okay. They've gone for the height. Yeah, from the boot of Patton. Yeah, it's claimed by Johnson, who is tackled immediately by Atkins. Ready, boys. Wait. Wait. And again, the Wolves go. concentrating. Wait, Make the sure they get back to the official. Surrendered to. The discipline Stand from Warrington down. has been outstanding. Go. You well, talk the about the count would indicate that. Yeah, and, and you know it, it, it shows the professionalism oh, wait, wait. that they've shown tonight. Oh, well, Haraki, he juggled with that, and nearly went without it. He's had a big game though for Salford, hasn't he? Has, he? he has. And Harrison okay. Hansen, Leithwaite missed the tackle. Oh, oh not on. Corey Patterson, you would have put your mortgage on him not dropping the ball in a situation like that. It's an amazing thing, isn't it, under pressure. Just took his eyes off the ball. He was looking to see what was happening around him. And uh, why wouldn't you look around when you've just got a man called Westwood sort of zoning in? Well, he's, uh, he'll be frustrated because his team have played well. Houston Harris. And full-time at Leeds, the leaders march on, 36-16. There's been a few turning points, hasn't there? You know, with uh, with the injuries to to Warrington, and then remember, Dwyer came on and uh, put on the tackle that created the try. They got the possession, and then of course the uh, the Patterson try, which was turned down when it looked as though it uh, it pinks the ball from Daryl Clark. St Helens just ahead at the KC Stadium as well. The top two. This is Bridge again, and Curry has caused havoc down this left-hand side. And a try to get your hat-trick if it's given for Gene Ormsby. That is amazing. I think this is a try. He does a wonderful job here. Puts Will himself in, in mid-air. His only priority, Steve, is to get that ball down. He jumps over the, the onrushing defenders. Gene Ormsby, born and bred just down the road in Droylesden. Wow! That's that an amazing a... finish. That has got to be the try of the season. I remember years ago, Ali Lauatiti doing something similar in the corner at Leeds. Legs almost straight up in the air, just like Gene Ormsby had then. And down it went for the try. A hat-trick for Ormsby. His first hat-trick, by the way. Clark did the damage run from the dummy half, Bridge sent it through. And Kerry, as he's done all night, he has fed the ball out onto this left-hand side. But ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you won't see anything better than that.
And that try alone, I'm telling you in advance, has just made him the man of the match. This is Mr. Incredible. Well, Steve, you're not born with that knowledge and that kind of understanding on how to finish that. He'll have done that countless, countless times. And Tony Smith, you see Lee Breers on the headset, they'll have enjoyed that as much as every one of us in this stadium, perhaps not the Salford Guys, fans, but what a wonderful play. finish. Sure well, let's right. see the three. This is his first hat-trick ever. Right. Yeah, and fed by the same guy, and he's done it again. He's had a big game, hasn't he, Ben Kerry? But, oh, I'm just shaking in disbelief at the finish. I think, I think we've had a little bit of a nonsense here, because... Ratchford was setting up for the conversion, and I think a fan, has, to much the amusement of Stefan Ratchford, a fan, I think, has jumped off the terraces and has kicked the ball. Did he get it? Stole no, he missed ball. it. Stole it. We stole it. <laughs> ben Thaler's having a little smile as well. I think he, he, he pointed to the exits to tell the fella to get out of the place, but... Hang on, that, you mean he's stolen it? He's pinched it? No, no, no. He pinched the ball off the kicking tee and had a shot at goal. Well, there's a guy running across the car park over there with a white ball. I hope it's a young kid. Oh. Well, that's, that's bizarre. I'll tell you what will be bizarre, Eddie, is that that try from Ormsby, his hat-trick try, will be shown time and time and time again. And so will this, so will this. Look. Oh, it's <laughs> he good got it. yeah, He nearly got it. Really it's good it, technique. I think he should have kept that planted foot just a little bit more stronger. They got more oomph in it. Well, it's difficult when you're wearing jeans. You haven't got <laughs> that flexibility with uh, that they have with shorts. How do you know, Steve? When was the last time you wore jeans, Steve? Oh, hey. Hey, you'll be surprised. <laughs> Go on, bit. when? Bill Haley's days, if you must know. Who's Bill Haley? Never mind. Well, that's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. I don't know whether the supporter is still in the ground or not, but that's a kicking lesson from Stefan Ratchford. 34-18, it's Warrington's night now. I tell you what, that, that incident with the fan jumping out of the crowd and kicking the ball would be all over social media. There'd be thousands and millions yeah. of hits. Having a look at that, you watch. It'd have been more if it had kicked no, it. Yes. I wonder if the touch judge would have given it the two points for Warrington had he done so. No, oh, it, it just hasn't gone for him. It was a short kickoff. And you've got to praise this uh, Salford outfit for at least trying to gain possession from. And you can see there that it, the top, the tap back from uh, Ben Jones Bishop. They came up with the error. It's another gallant defeat, isn't it? Full time at Hull and. Uh, well, a drop goal in the end, won it for St. Helens. By the way, the Leeds victory has included uh, enough points tonight for Kevin okay, Sinfield to go all-time third oh, on the uh, goal-kicking charts in the history of this sport, uh, ahead, uh, better than Gus Risman. You get away, you're getting out the rock to move! So a big night for Kevin Sinfield, big night for the top two. Huddersfield, of course, they won last night as well. And uh, Warrington are keeping them in their sights. And as you just mentioned, Eddie, Sinfield can now be classed as one of the greatest. Now? Yes. Last week he could. <laughs> King Kev of Headingley, Steve-O. Yep. Who knows, Sir Kev? Five. Uh, he deserves all the accolades he will get and has got. Over the years, model game. professional. Bridge just drills that ball towards the touchline. Yeah. It doesn't go over the line. Oh, Evans will James run it back. back this try gave him so much hope. Go. The last three times that Warrington have given the ball to Salford at the end of the period with it with six plays, it's been 10 metres or less from the Reds' line. That's, I suppose, what teams talk about, controlling the match when you are. They've got a lead here, forcing their opponents to go 90 metres plus six players. Look. They're defending enthusiastically, oh, this is hard now for Come Salford. The final five minutes or so to do justice to their performance. Oh, well, they haven't thrown the towel in, that is for sure, as I say, from the uh, attempted short kickoff with many other side. And that's a beautiful pass. And this fella can move, Ben Jones Bishop. That's a great tackle, though. Brilliant tackle. 
That's a great tackle, and it yeah. is Brad, Brad Dwyer, Dwyer again, Dwyer. Eddie. Fantastic. Who's making a late bid for the man of the match. And Ben Jones Bishop he has a really wide gate, really lolloping style. He has no they chance. Brad them. Dwyer, good shoulder contact, leg drive, and puts him off the island and gets the taps on the head from his teammates. Phil, we talked about the... I think the drain, the, the physical drain, and how much defending the teams had to do, or these two teams had to do. But I think it's been the mental edge of Warrington, typified for me by Chris Hill. He's had a bit of pain, a bit of discomfort, but his side needed him. Strap it up, he said to his physio, strap it up, get me back on, we need the two points. Well, I think this year, Chris Hill and Ben Curry have probably been Warrington's best two players. Maybe in the second half of the season, there's another one-on-one -on -one steal. Yes, it is, and Haraki's on his way to the line. Ben Curry is after him, though, and Ben Curry denies him. And he's another guy that could have been up there for the man of the match, Eddie, Ben Curry. He's been brilliant. Yep. But you've already given the call. I have, don't worry. And uh, no doubt in my mind. Get out. Penalty to Salford. Been few and far between them tonight. That's only their third. So a disciplined performance by Warrington as much as anything else. As Scott Taylor drives for the line. Well, I hope Theo Fars gets over for a four-pointer. He fully deserved it. Another penalty. That's four. And Taylor can't get it down. Now then, will Warrington finally get one leg at least over that whitewash? He'll come back with the ten. Yeah, and uh, the youngster's back out there, isn't he? Josh Wood. In the closing moments. Farge again. Here's a chance for Walton. He gives it to Johnson. He gets away from Ormsby. Good tackle again by Dwyer. He knows how to do the ball and all. Liam tackle. Hull again held up. Dwyer again underneath. Oh, Steve, you've got to change your mind. No. There are four candidates. Well, we normally have at least. Back here, boy. Discipline, lad. That many, don't we? Go. Yeah, it certainly made an impact, and uh, I'm, I'm really pleased for him as well. A lot of publicity about him coming back from uh, from London Help! Broncos. Move! But he's certainly made a name Play for himself ball. tonight. That's a penalty. Settle down. That's a penalty. Play on. Settle down. Play on, says Ben Taylor calmly. High kick, claimed by Ben Jones Bishop, and he just lost it. No, I think you're trying to flick the ball back inside. He's, he's claiming that he's come it. off bridge. He has passed it. But Br Bridge doesn't make any, but the ball hits a man, so he's trying to claim. He definitely tried to pass it, but... He made a play for that, didn't he, Stuart? No, oh, I think he's sure. in the other arm. I don't think he's had time to, to make a play for it. I think he's just hit him. But I think it's the right call. Warrington scrum. It's a great, just hit him. It's a great effort. I mean, Bridge was coming in to do the tackling. He can be cruel sometimes, Eddie. Well, his arms are moving towards the ball. I thought that was the rule. I, I think he was actually going into the tackle. Well done, Stuart. Stand your ground. I've had 25 years of this. He doesn't have to argue with me. I don't know the rules. <coughs> I know as much as some. <coughs> Daryl Clark. Uh, solid. I said Warrington's season's been erratic. This has been solid tonight. Yeah, it is. I suppose they've done well with the injuries they've had. I was making the point earlier that Ben Curry and Chris Hill, in my opinion, have been the best two players so far this season. But they maybe need a, a hooker or a halfback in the second half of the season to start to really fire to give them the chance of glory. They've got the potential still to be at the top of the table. They need to make the top four. I would say that's a minimum standard requirement for the Wolves and the supporters as Declan Patton just puts the ball over the sideline to control this game at the very final stages. Well, if they don't make the top four at the end of the season after the Super 8s, the 23 rounds we're going through now, then the 7 and the Super 8s, if they don't make the top four, they ain't going to Old Trafford this year. You're right. But the one thing that Tony Smith will be extremely happy with is the combination of utilising Ben Kerry running the second row, running out on that left-hand side, because he was the provider 
and he has been a tremendous provider for the hat trick boy, man of the match, Gene Ormsby. One of the players that I think Warrington have missed this year so far is, is Matthew Russell. There's a penalty here at one against Warrington, breaking from the scrum, not binding properly. But I think when Matthew Russell gets back to full fitness and in the side, he can make such a difference with his runs and that quick play of the ball. And then I think we'll start to see the best from players like Daryl Clark. You know, when you think about it, you, you make a very good point about uh, Matty Russell, but when you think about it, there are so many players out injured at this particular part of the season. We were making the point last night at Castleford, they've got a, a plethora of players ready to come back late on. It'll be like getting new signings in, and they might all come back fresh at just the right time. We've always said it, Eddie, the sides who have the most depth, they can rely on it because they'll always get injury, will finish up at the grand final. But Warrington have taken a big step towards finishing in the top four here tonight with a dogged and determined and solid display against the Salford Red Devils. They gave it all that they had and Warrington lost a few players to injury. But despite that, they've come out of here with a very good win for them. 34-18, analysis when we come back. Ladbrokes, proud sponsor of the Super...